This is Seattle, Washington, a majestic jewel in the Pacific Northwest. The city is surrounded by amazing natural beauty. Mountains, streams, and oceans. But Mike Iconelli is an urban angler from Jersey. In these urban waters, he'll face his most difficult and dangerous challenge yet. The National Weather Service confirming this was a funnel cloud over Lake Washington near Mercer Island. This is City Limits Fishing. Seattle. This fish is kicking my butt. That is awesome. We sent a champion oh, angler to some God. great cities oh, on a God. mission. Philadelphia! That's Washington, D.C. A stone throw away. Chicago River within the city limits. And that's my limit! This is City Limits Fishing with Mike Iconelli. late August in Seattle, Washington. The skies are clear and the temperatures are mild. Traditionally, you can set your watch by 75 to 85 degrees, beautiful, sunny. People in Seattle live for August. And for anglers like Captain Keith Robbins, late August means salmon are running. They're a fantastic fight, and I take a lot of bass anglers out fishing, and they are always excited about catching king salmon. You know, everything I heard coming into this week, it was setting up to be one of the best trips ever. 80 degree weather, everything was perfect. And then, a massive cold front moved in. Central and South Sound, same range of overnight lows, mid 40s to around 50. 56 degrees over downtown Seattle right now. Yes, it is still supposed to be summer. All of a sudden, we've dropped 20 degrees in less than 48 hours. And any time there's that major of a temperature change, it's going to be tough. Change in fishing is bad news. This is my first time fishing in Seattle. Morning. How's it going? How you doing? And my first Good time meeting Captain Keith. Keith. Yes. Mike, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Yeah, you know, normally we don't get what you call a crack of the dawn early start. I wanted everybody at the dock at five because I know setup takes a while. But we don't leave the dock until after seven. And Keith is concerned we've missed the early bite. So with salmon, especially adult returning Chinook salmon, early morning tends to be better. Especially when the tides are uh, not quite the tides you want to pick. The water line tells us this tide is terrible, just after dead low. Look at that drop. What's the tidal drop here? Uh, today is about 11 feet. Oh my God. It's gonna be. It's gonna be way up. It's just tide just started coming in. You're talking about tides mixed with a cold front, and anytime you have those two elements, the fish can be tricky. Yeah. The next time you guys come out, let me pick the damn tide. <laughs> from the Shill Shoal Marina, just north of Seattle, and run a short distance to West Point. It's just outside the locks that connect Puget Sound to Lake Washington. This geography makes Seattle a unique fishery, says outdoor writer Marky Wasson. We have freshwater fishing on one side of the city of Seattle. You have saltwater fishing on the other side, just west of the town. Our challenge is to catch a limit of four salmon and 10 bass metropolitan Seattle limits in six hours of fishing time. There's actually a pretty good pump right here. It'll come up to about 90 and then oh, back man. down to 400. And right now we're in, you know, 180 feet and we're gonna drift up to about 90 or 100, depending again which way we drift, and then back down into, you know, no man's land. Right, right. into the abyss. rise and then the drop on the backside. Yep, yep. You know, I didn't have any idea how we're gonna catch these fish today, but I knew we're not gonna troll. We're not gonna use downriggers. Everybody fishes with downriggers. Oh, yeah. Throw, drags balls around. Except for some of us old school moochers. So. Moochers. When I tell him about mooching, he's looking at me like I'm speaking French. And I'm like, mooching? You know, I, 
I mooch a lot of stuff, you know, back home. I mooch stuff off my girlfriend. I mooch stuff off my friends. We're just dropping and reeling pretty much all day, and and uh, we're working the whole water column, um, anywhere from 80 to 200 feet of water. And basically, it's a technique that's semi-vertical. You know, where you're letting the bait drop down. You're trying to get the fish to react, and it really, honestly, reminded me of something I love to do, which is to jig a spoon in fresh water. We got a lot of bait right now between about. 30 and 50, and then another big wad between 75 and 100. 75 and 100? Yeah, solid. But you, you should drop down through it and back up. You should drop, uh, you should go about 140. Just remember, if your line stops on the drop reel as fast as you can. My instinct coming into this is, yeah, I know what to do when the line stops. When the line stops, man, you jam it. You lift that rod up and you set the hook as hard as you can. and I know instantly that he's missed the fish. Oh, my line stuff. <laughs> but not here in the salt water, not, not for salmon. The way to get the hook in these fish, the way to do it, is to lower your rod tip and just crank. Reel as fast as you can. Get the momentum of the fish coming up to drive them hooks home. He, Got no worms left? He took my junk. Your she is? All right, now I know what it feels like. God. I'm excited, I gotta be honest with you. I've, I've had visions in my head of these giant king salmon, you know, fighting. And finally, I get another bite. How do I land this thing? Just lift him, just lift him up toward your oh, face. No, 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 don't throw me. <laughs> just lift. Man, this is a big one. I gotta take my time with this. I can't, I can't have this one get off. I need this one. Oh, I got him, I got him in the boat! And I get that first salmon in, and it's, it's small. That's a king salmon, a wild one too. You see the little adipose fin, the ones that are born in the hatchery. Yeah. They get clipped when they're about four uh, inches long and then returned into the river. Right. They're just like the wild fish, only they were born in the hatchery as opposed to in the on the river. So not what I dreamt about as my first fish, but it's a start. It's a fish in the boat. I'm in the right direction to catch a big one. Captain Keith Robbins and I are fishing in Seattle, Washington, the day after a massive cold front hit. The fishing is slow, and we still haven't caught a keeper. All of a sudden, Keith hooks up. Real, 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 real. Halibut or sole. Is that a foot of your sole? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a Look trophy. Look at that thing. <laughs> <laughs> there are thousands of these out here. I mean, you could fill up a boat with these one day if you wanted to. Not the species we're looking for, but it's pretty exciting. It's another fish, and it's showing how diverse this fishery is. The tide is picking up speed, so we power up to make another drift. I'm, I'm looking up at Mike, and Mike's, you know, not the stereotypic bass angler. I don't see too many patches. He took a notice of my shoes, and I've got, I've got some weird looking shoes on, a little bit of pink in them. I start giving him a little grief about it, and I actually, actually have a pink hat. Here's what you really need, Mike, right here, buddy. That's you living large when you wear one of those. Pink hats. When things are starting to go bad, he's got that pink hat, and the guy that wears the pink hat's going to start catching them. Mike's not too thrilled about putting this pink hat on, so I tell him that pink is the new black. I don't know if the, the pink being the new black is a Seattle thing or what, but it's not a Philadelphia thing. Well, we'll wait a little bit more. If about an hour, another hour goes past, and we don't get a bite, I'll put that hat on. Think pink. I'm anxious. And I know the clock is running. It's like tournament fishing. The, the, the pressure's on. The tide's coming in. The water and the current are picking up. It's moving faster. And in our mind, the fishing's going to pick up. You know, but we're on our second drift, now our third drift, and the fishing's not picking up. We leave West Point and make a short run into Elliott Bay in downtown Seattle. Seattle has the Space Needle, the Monorail, and the Rain. <laughs> it has the Symphony, Jimi Hendrix, and well, it rains. It's known for aviation, coffee, and uh, rain. Rain. 
We actually have less rain in Seattle than New York City does, but it just, it does rain a little bit, quite a bit. And fresh seafood is the star of the show in Seattle. At fine restaurants like the Hunt Club, Chef Jason Dallas creates unique entrees using fresh local fish. Tell me a little bit about the taste of Seattle. For the taste of Seattle, I would say we're going to go with salmon. Thank you. We're going to have a good time. There are ominous clouds over the city. You know, really scary looking storm clouds, you know? Smoochy, smoochy. Mike makes one or two drops, and all of a sudden he gets he gets another small salmon. Hold on. Let me see, is he clipped? Looks like he's clipped. I've caught a circumcised trout. This is pretty cool because this is the first time I've had an opportunity to catch this kind of fish. Is that one clipped? Is he circumcised? No, he's, he's a wild fish. It's a wild? He's got his fin, yeah. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah. Just a cute little fin. See his black gum line? Yeah. That makes him a Chinook salmon. That's it. We don't touch him. We like to keep the scales and the slime on him. No bird. Like a, a nice one. Now the, the weather's starting to change. We're start, it's starting to drizzle a little bit. We're putting on our rain gear. All you can see above the skyline are these black clouds. I mean, it looked, it, I mean, it almost looked like something out of a Batman movie or something. Jeff Renner is tracking conditions out there right now. Jeff? A wild afternoon, and we're not talking just a garden variety thunderstorm. Take a look at this video taken from our waterfront cam. That's what we call a wall cloud, and often precedes some significant hail, certainly lots of lightning, heavy rain, and possibly even some funnel clouds. We got to get out of here. We got to go north. It looks like it's clear up there. Quickly, we run from the storms in downtown Seattle, 20 minutes north to the highlands. The bait fish are there. It's looking fantastic. Whoa! Look at the school of bait fish, the school of herring down there. I, I'm getting excited. Oh, yeah. You know, we're in a spot, and now that I know there's bait here, I got to believe that there's some fish here. Come on, I've been mooching for you all day. Let's do something really crazy and catch one. We make a number of drifts over the spots, and nothing happens. We're running out of time, so we need to do something drastic. I put on the Feels pink good. hat. I feel luckier already. Within moments, Keith gets a fish, but it's just a flounder. Our luck hasn't changed. A big one. Getting another flounder is just not good. I mean, this is, this is wasting some serious time. Frustrated, Keith decides to pick up the pace and fires up the little motor. Fit right here. And we're going to use a technique called motor mooching, which is basically to kind of speed up the drift, use the little kicker outboard, and present the line at just a little bit different angle. There's a good one right there. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. I'm real. I'm real, 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 real. And this is, a, this is a better fish. This feels like it could be a keeper salmon. Look at that! What the heck is that? It's a rockfish. I feel this ice cold. Doesn't count. Doesn't count for the limit. No. This can't pass for a salmon whatsoever. N uh, I don't think so, but there is a limit on rockfish. I think it's one. You may have your limit on rockfish. Yeah! I There's think. my city limit of rockfish right there, baby. That's a <laughs> Seattle special. Look at that. Do you have any idea whether the, the sockeye we're cooking now was mooch? Mooch. Mooch. Keith Robbins and I are attempting a nearly impossible fishing challenge. Catch a limit of salmon in salt water and a limit of bass in fresh water in just six hours of fishing time. So far, it's not going well. For the first time in my mind, I'm starting to think, you know what? Maybe this wasn't the best idea. You know, maybe we're just drawing ourselves a little too thin. The plan was to catch salmon early in Puget Sound then go off the clock and lock through to Lake Washington. This plan about splitting the day between salmon and bass, it just seems ridiculous to me. It was a prescription for disaster right from the start, and I'm starting to feel a little bit more negative all the time. To succeed, we needed to catch our salmon limit early. 
but we got skunked and didn't catch a single it. keeper. Just like that, and you don't hurt them. So, so finally, the producer pulls the plug on the salmon fishing, and man, I just wanted to, I just wanted to stay. I mean, it really felt like we just, we just found the fish, and now we're done. So, I mean, it's just ridiculous. I'm just, I'm so disappointed. We're running out of time, running from a storm, we have no fish. Just when I thought this day couldn't get any worse. I don't know anything about bass fishing. You know nothing about bass fishing? No, sir. Listen, if you can get me through the locks, and if there are bridge pilings, and they're smallmouth, we're OK. The bridges are all floating. The bridges are floating. At the locks, we get our first break. Of course, they haven't shut this one, you know. Right. Oh, there you go. oh my god, nice timing. Perfect, thank you. We pull in, and they close the gates behind us. We go off the clock until we get to Lake Washington. I was excited to get into fresh water. I was excited to fish with some smallmouth. We switch from Keith's salmon boat to the chase boat because it's designed for bass fishing. And the first thing we do is we start around some docks, and then we go to an underwater point. I'm feeling pretty good about this because I'm with a amazing bass fishermen and I'm gonna to get to see some stuff I've never seen before. Not all the bridges are floating. This one has pilings, great structure to drop shot. Drop shotting, I mean that was something I thought we did at the, when I was in college at the bar. I, I mean I don't know what drop shotting is. I'm so intense, so focused on catching at least one fish, I don't take the time to help cheat. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. But it's fun. Uh, I'm, I'm enjoying doing something I've never done before. You know, 40 minutes after being in the lake, things aren't working out. You know, I was kind of in my mind thinking it was just going to happen. Is this going to click? It's not working out. I'm starting to get frustrated. Whew. There's a little bit of tension in the air right now. And I can see Mike is getting really irritable. And uh, I, I mean, I'm back there just casting. I don't know where to cast. I don't even want to ask him any questions. I am so clueless about bat, bass fishing. It's a dead zone. We're not getting any bites. And I look behind me, and the clouds are getting thick. The sky's getting dark. It starts to drizzle. So I look over, and there's lightning, and I can hear the thunderclap. And man, this day has gone going from bad to worse. King 5 News starts now. It started with an amazing light show in the skies over western Washington, followed by a downpour strong enough to blow out manhole covers. We make a run to get away from the storm. We head south to the Lake Washington Bridge that connects Seattle and Mercer Island. We're starting to get some white caps, and it's, you can see more lightning in the distance, and uh, it's getting wetter, and it's, it's uh, worse than threatening. For the moment, we feel safe under the shelter of the bridge, but we're oblivious to the danger overhead. The National Weather Service confirming this was a funnel cloud over Lake Washington near Mercer Island. This is Mike. Check out my book, Fishing on the Edge, and you'll learn why I never give up. For more information on clothing, gear, and equipment used on the show, go to MikeIconelli.com. I'm in Seattle, Washington with Captain Keith Robbins. We're trying to catch a limit of salmon and bass in one day. Three hours in each realm is just not enough time. The fishing is bad. I cannot find the smallmouth. I can't find the right bait. I can't get a strike. Now we got the weather encroaching on us. It's dark, dark clouds. It almost looks like a wall cloud behind us approaching. The wind has picked up and it's drizzling. We still have time if the weather will just give us a break. I'm not too worried about the rain, but the lightning, I, I don't think so. It's not my it's it's not anything I want to be involved with. Keith and I agree, if we see any more lightning, it's over. We'll get off the water immediately. I hadn't seen a rock yet. Oh, you're full of lightning. You like it? I saw it.
The storm blew through with lots of lightning. Our network of tower cams tracking the danger as it came across the sound into downtown Seattle. It's not worth our life, you know, and, and there's a point at which you just got to say, we got to give up. We got to call today. We got to quit. We can't afford to take a risk of, of getting killed on the water. The National Weather Service confirming this was a funnel cloud over Lake Washington near Mercer Island, but it never touched down. Local there bass angler Glenn May was driving our chase boat. And it was right near us. We didn't see it, but it was real close to us. That's free. That is scary. For Keith and me, this was a very difficult, frustrating day of fishing. It hasn't been the best trip ever. It's been almost a total failure. I, I feel like I gave it my best, and, and uh, you know, I... Not only did we fail to get a limit, we failed to catch a single keeper, salmon, or bass. I'm glad we tried, because it could have been successful. And if, it, if we had pulled it off, it would have been a home run. It would have been a grand slam. It's a shame that it happened. But what it does is it pumps you up even more for the next trip. I'm going to do it again. It, it's, I want to pull it off. Whether it's on camera or not, it's something I'm going to try again. And hopefully, we can pull it off. You keep moving forward. You keep learning from your mistakes. And you know that sooner or later, you're going to go out and go whack them.